Hello and welcome to the Growing Healthy Families podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Haggerty. On this show, I interview the world's top health experts so that you can know with certainty what it takes to give your family a life of epic health and wellness. As parents, we don't want to see our kids struggle. I knew that he had the potential. I knew that something needed to be done. It was hard. We would get frustrated. We didn't know how to, how to deal with it. I was more e- emotional about it. Sure that, you know, we're, we're here. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. Hey, moms and dads, it's Dr. Scott back here with the next episode of the Growing Healthy Families podcast. And so on this episode of Dr. Scott's Health Tips, so I want to start talking about something that's coming up, school. We are, at the time of recording this, we are about a month out from school. And one of the things that I think is very important to keep in mind is that when we start looking at getting kids back into school routines, there's several things that we have to consider. So you know, schools can be a very structured, very organized, very um, very regimented routine. And summertime for most kids tends to be the exact opposite of that. Very unstructured, very unregimented. Sleep is quite off, um, you know, diet, so they're not in the same habits and patterns. And so one of the things that's important is understanding that kids need to get back into a routine so that they can slide back into the school routine as easily as possible. And so as you're leading up to getting the kids back into school, one of the things that I would really strongly consider is trying to get your kids about two weeks in advance into a pattern of a more normal sleep routine, right? And even if they're not exactly on their normal, like, day-night schedule, so start working them back closer and closer as you get, you know, within a couple of weeks of, of the start of the school year to that school routine. So, you know, a lot of times what you'll have to do is, you know, you'll have to try and get them to a place where, you know, it's within an hour and then you get them within a half hour. And so that by the time that you're hitting school, that they're back on the normal school sleep schedule, getting up at a consistent time and their body recalibrates to being in that regular sleep wake cycle. So a number of different, different things you want to consider is that, you know, their, their brains have to have a certain amount of sleep. And one of the things that's, that's consistent is that if kids get out of their normal sleep cycle and they're not getting enough sleep, then what they'll do during the course of their school day or, you know, during any old day is they will have to tap into their stress division of the nervous system to continue to keep them going. Um, And moms and kids, what that turns into you during the day is a kid who starts to melt down later in the day. um, And you're wondering why. And it's just because they've been tapping into their reserve energy called their sympathetic stress nervous system to keep them going. And so when, you know, when you talk about how that translates into school, it's it's when your, you know, kids are not getting enough sleep or their sleep routines are altered and they come home at the end of the school day and they just, they melt, right? Their behavior goes to heck. So they're more emotional. They're melting down for no reason. And it's literally just because they push so hard, stayed so focused during the school day. And then because they were in their reserves, all of a sudden everything melts down when school is over because now they don't have to hold it together. And so making sure that they have a consistent sleep routine prior to going back into school makes those transitions easier. So, you know, as, as kids start getting back into the, the study routine, see a couple things that you want to start planning for. So, you know, to maximize a child's pr- ability to be productive in school, one of the things that is really, I, I think it's really cool. I, I read several research studies that were performed um, a, number, a few years ago now by Harvard, and they were productivity studies. And so, you know what, we want to make sure that our kids are able to get the most out of school and be able to learn at their maximum. And one of the really cool studies that was done is that they found that there is a a very specific sweet spot for the amount of time that a child spends reading, studying, doing task-oriented work. And what they found is that if you go about 30 minutes, right, whether you're reading, working on a project, whatever it might be, anything that takes a high level of mental focus, and then at 30 minutes, have an alarm set and then take a five minute to seven minute break. And so that seven minute break or five minute break, what it needs to be is you get up and you go do something the exact opposite. It's movement. It's not related to the task in any way, shape or form. It's a complete disconnect. So what they found is that there was a significant, and I do mean significant increase in overall productivity um, with fewer errors and better retention of what was being done. And so, you know, keep in mind what that means, right? Like you want, you want to have your child be at maximum productivity levels all year. So for them to be able to comprehend and retain, 
short intervals help them to be able to have time to step away and process what they learn. And moms and dads, let me put this in a context for, for most of you that would be very, um, very tangible. How many times have you been working on a project at work and you, you're working on it for long periods of time and you just cannot find a solution to save your life? You're working on it, working on it, working on it. The longer that you work, the harder it becomes to try and find a solution. So you get up and you walk away out of frustration. So what had happened is that when you start working on the problem, more than likely, your brain was already in stress mode because you were having a hard time finding the solution. And the more you concentrated on it, the more difficulty you found coming to the solution. Get up out of frustration. You walk away. And maybe during your break, Maybe a couple hours later when you're not concentrating on it anymore and your brain had turned the page and your stress levels had come down, you instantaneously find the solution. It just comes to you. Well, so moms and dads, this is an example of that. If you're able to minimize the amount that your brain kicks into your stress reserves, right, the fight or flight side kicking in out of frustration or just spending too much time in focus, then when you have to or when your child has to focus on tasks, they'll be able to come up with better solutions, they will be able to be more productive with the time that they're working because that's exactly what's occurring, right? If they're staying in a place where their brain is calm, then it takes longer for them to go and hit a state of frustration. The brain's able to maintain focus for short, intense windows, and they can process what they're seeing more effectively. It's a great technique. Um, I have, I have a, a lot of the kids that we care for in our practice, we have them implemented, but we do this across the board. I advise you know, all of our business people so if they have jobs that require intense levels of focus for long periods of time, that taking these short intervals and every single person who implements it, they come back reporting how much it's improved their productivity and more than 90% of them have implemented it in their businesses as well and have, so, have seen significant improvements in their teams when they implement the 30 on five off rule. So make sure that your kids are aware of this. Another big thing is as your kids are getting ready for school, make sure that we're looking at things like movement breaks, right? So one of the things I think that's important to talk to the teacher about is, do the kids get movement in the classroom? So, you know, something that's very interesting is all of the research about child neurodevelopment. They talk constantly about the importance of movement for our children. So I would ask the, 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 your school's teachers about how often the kids are able to take movement breaks. How often do they get up and walk around? Do they do exercise? Are there chairs that are proprioceptive chairs like wobble chairs and bouncy chairs and things like that? Um, making sure that there's, you know, there's a question and answer session about this so that moms and, you know, moms and dads, you can talk to the teachers and say, hey, listen, you know, I, I really think it's important that, that our kids are able to get up and move and, um, and share this information with them that, you know, that there is there's some solid research about the importance of movement and learning. And, you know, talk to them about this and encourage them to have the kid take movement breaks. A lot of schools are finding great success by bringing exercise into the classrooms. So a number of schools have started, you know, daily, uh, daily and uh, daily and uh, consistent yoga programs for their kids. And what they have found is that behavior is better, focus and intention is better, because when kids move and they move consistently, it helps their brain to develop better. It helps to minimize their stress levels. It helps them to regain focus because there's absolutely nothing more important for a child's or an adult's brain than movement. So then that also comes back to when your kids come home from school. I know a lot of us want our kids to sit down, do their homework, just get it all done so we don't have to worry about it. But what I would encourage you to think about is give them some time where they can get up and move. I wouldn't have them dive into video games, right? But have them come, come home from school, so get a healthy snack and then have them move around for a while. Maybe it's they go out and play for half an hour to an hour. Maybe it's they go and play in the basement, but encourage them to move. They have stress energy they accumulate, and that's an important thing to think about, is when a child does not move for the majority of their day, so their little brains need to get up and move so that they can recharge their mental batteries. And so if you give them a little movement break, then what you'll find is that they'll come back, they'll be, they'll be better able to maintain their focus, and they'll be far more productive if they have an ability to just get up and move for a little while. So, and then let's talk lastly about, about lunches and snacks for schools. So, you know, my kids are, are both in ele elementary school and moms and dads, I have to tell you, it's probably one of my biggest frustrations in life is going to the schools and seeing what kids eat. And I wanna, I wanna share this with you because, you know, 
I know many of you probably have never really been taught about optimal nutrition for our kids. So, you know, one of the podcasts that we released recently was from a woman named Sally Fallon Morrell. And she talks about the importance of, um, you know, having, you know, plenty of, uh, plenty of animal proteins, healthy fats. Um, but one of the overriding themes is controlling inflammation in our bodies. And, you know, one of the things I think that is critical to understand is that when, when we're feeding our kids very low quality things like giving them, you know, uh, goldfish crackers and, you know, sending them with chips and sending them with sweets and, um, you know, not thinking about the nutritional density of their meals and, um, you know, not making sure they have adequate healthy fats and proteins in their diet. So what ends up happening, moms and dads, is we're putting, we're putting low octane fuel into a high octane car, right? Their little brains and their little developing bodies, they require high quality nutrition. So I would really strongly consider looking into things like uh, the Weston A. Price Foundation's um, books on, uh, uh, from their nourish, Nourishing Traditions programs so that you can learn about how to properly feed your child's brain and body for optimal immune system and development. These things could be literally life-changing for the quality of their health as a child and as an adult. Um, you can also look in other resources, too. Like um, There's a great book by Dr. David Seaman, and I did a podcast with him um, a few months ago um, talking about this process of anti-inflammatory nutrition. They're not too dissimilar. If you look at what both, both topics really cover, um, it's all about managing blood sugar, healthy fats, keeping, anti, you know, keeping foods that are inflammatory, and minimal, uh, minimal, minimal amounts in the diets. Moms and dads, we are seeing epidemic levels of kids having diabetes, um, we're seeing these issues with, you know, high levels of inflammation in kids. We're seeing kids obese at higher rates than ever. And, and moms and dads, you have to understand it's because so much of what we're feeding our kids is, is very, very, very high carbohydrate foods. And if you look at the foods that we're putting in, right, like I go to my kid's school and we see things like, um, you know, fruit snacks and um, juices and goldfish crackers and, you know, candies and cookies and pizza and all this stuff that's just loaded with simple carbohydrates. Our kids can't process this stuff. They need to go and have nutritionally dense foods so that their blood sugar is stable all day because that'll also help them to be more focused in school. If their blood sugar is up and down, it's going to affect their ability to go and maintain attention. And we need to make sure that the foods that they're taking in are ones that help their, their, their body to develop a strong immune system, a strong and healthy nervous system. Because if we don't feed them the right foods now, then it's very, very difficult for them to develop healthy habits as adults and have strong immune systems so they can be healthy as they get older. So, you know, it's a lot of these habits and patterns. And moms and dads, it can be a battle sometimes, but consistency wins. Getting our kids into the habit of eating healthy foods when they're young sets them up to be healthy adults. I can tell you as, as a dad of two little kids that, you know, we make nutrition a high priority. You know, our kids get treats, right? Periodically, you know, once, twice a week, they'll get a treat. But more times than not, the foods that, I, that my kids eat are fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, organic foods. Um, you know, we, we try to really make sure that we're doing organic and non-GMO as often as possible. And, you know, it's not necessarily feasible for everybody, but we make a, a choice that, you know, we invest on the front side so that our kids stay healthy so they don't become sick adults. And I would encourage every one of you to, to consider this. And there's lots of great resources. Like I said, you know, the, the Weston A. Price Foundation, um, the, the Deflame Diet um, book is a great book. Deflame.com is a great resource. Our website has tons of information, the EliteFamilyKairos.com. Um, and, you know, just listen and learn about this stuff because the information is available. There, there's, there's tons of information out there that you can use to start moving the needle to get your kids to eat healthier diets. And, you know, when you start putting all these things in place, it sets our kids up to be super healthy during the school year keep their blood sugar real steady so they'll be more productive when they're in school, help them to have better focus and attention, and, uh, you know, just really set them up for success in the upcoming year. And I know that I went through a lot of moms and dads. Um, and I, if there's other things that you'd like me to dig into deeper, so don't hesitate to send us messages. You can go to the, uh, the Growing Healthy Families Facebook page, uh, or you can go to my personal practice page at EliteFamilyKairos.com and send a message if there's topics that you'd like to dig in deeper on this. I will have follow-ups. Um, about other things that we want to make sure that we're, we're having um, awareness points as we get the kids back into school and also keeping our kids healthy during the school year. Um, but I think this is a, a really important topic as we start getting our kids ready for the transition back into school so that they can be set up for success. 
So um, moms and dads, if this was helpful for you, make sure that you, uh, you let us know. Give us a like um, on Facebook. Make sure that um, you share this episode with, uh, with people that you care about. You think they would value this information. Um, if there's things that you'd like to learn more about, so make sure you let us know. If you're listening to us on um, iTunes or Stitcher or Google, um, make sure that you give us a rating and a review. Your feedback matters. Uh, we want to know how we're doing and if we're, we're hitting the mark and, and giving you the content that's going to help you and your family to live a life of epic health and wellness. And uh, if, again, I, just, I appreciate each one of you so much and help us to spread our mission because moms and dads, the whole reason that we're doing these podcasts is to give you access to resources that you wouldn't otherwise have. From the top experts, um, you know, my, my passion is very much to help you guys to not make the same mistakes that I did. Um, when I was a kid, I was an extremely unhealthy kid, struggled with my health all through my early life. And it's taken the latter half of my life to get my health to where, to where I'm living a really awesome quality of life. Um, you know, rarely sick, experiencing an amazing quality of life. My kids, we've modeled that so that they can have an excellent quality of life. My wife, the same way and all of our patients in our office. And it's really our mission to spread this message so that you guys learn the importance of all of these different factors and making sure that your family experiences the life that you're intended to. And it's just absolutely our mission by God. So moms and dads, help us spread the message. Share this with your friends. Share this with your loved ones. Send it out by Facebook Messenger. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter, Instagram, where you're listening to this. And also let us know what else you want to learn about because we want to make sure that we're getting you all the information that you need so that you can live the life that you deserve. So I'm going to get going here, guys. Um, it was definitely something I think that, uh, it was valuable today. Um, if you'd like to learn more again, let us know. This is Dr. Scott. God bless you guys. Be elite. Thank you for listening to the growing healthy families podcast, the world's number one source for health education. Make sure to go to iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a review. Make sure to follow us on social media at the links listed in the show notes and let us know what area of health you are struggling with so we can get you and your family on the road to epic health.